Okay, if you don't know me, I'm Marlon and I'm one of the TAs and today we're gonna to talk about how to create the discussion section for your research paper. And we're gonna do that by me walking you through how I would write a discussion section for a completely made up study that doesn't matter. Here we go. Uh, this study is called Y'all Nasty, Predictive Factors for Gross People Who Pee in Pools. First, you need some background. So my literature review was generally, you know, we found out that some people pee in pools and that was uh, Toilet 2010. Um, actually, I think he's French, so that's Tole uh, 2010. And then uh, we have those, we found that those people are gross. Uh, that was Clorox uh, in the year 2015. That's no relation to the brand. And then uh, we, gross people exist. Now, what you don't know, you probably know this person. Um, his name is uh, Grouch, O, and you probably know him from Sesame Street, but he's also a researcher. And so in 2012, he wrote that, but obviously you wouldn't put that much information in your paper. You would just say Grouch 2012. Now, uh, we also have All People Pee. Uh, you've heard of the book, uh, Everyone Poops? Yeah, well, uh, he's got, uh, a, you know, a, a related peer-reviewed article because that's what we use because we would never just use a children's book but we use peer-reviewed articles and that one's called everyone pees and so that's go me 1976 um we also found that like people who like we like we found that people like music and that's um houston comma w 2000 up uh, to 2000 zero, year 2000 excuse me and then uh we combine those to find that like obviously people who like music also pee that's go me comma 1976 semicolon houston comma 2000 both of those in parentheses that would be how you cite that in case you haven't figured that out from like the first like four papers you've had to do believe me some of you have it that's not that's neither here nor there here we go so and then finally um people put their face in pools and we found that from uh johnson and johnson 2000 and that was in a um an article called clear cell can't fix this uh um you'll also know them from an article they use they they wrote called don't use our baby powder and yeah anyway uh but again you wouldn't put all of that you would just say johnson and johnson 2000. okay so Real quick, uh, we sent out a Qualtrics, obviously. Uh, we got some results and now we're ready to write our discussion section. Now, one of the big differences between results and discussion um, is that the results are very visual, numeric, and generally kind of hard to understand. Not for you, of course, because you're introductory psych stat students, but for me, who is you know an ed psych grad student who uh, generally just gets by by pretending he knows things, um, I digress. The discussion is where you put those results in plain English. Uh, people like me who are going to see your results section and like be like, oh, this person's bilingual, that's interesting. Um, I'm going to like skip that and I, I don't, because I don't know what it means. And then hopefully they'll tell me in the discussion uh, and then spoiler, you will, you're gonna tell me in the discussion what all that means. Here's how I would explain my results. So we found that a majority of people have peed in pools since the age of eight. However, we found that after the age of 15, fewer people peed in pools though it was still a majority of people. Now, after the age of 22, it was still a majority of people, uh, but it was even fewer. So generally, if you're in an adult pool and the water burns your eyes, you could blame the chlorine, but you could also just blame the friend that you're swimming with. Wait, strike that. See, that would belong later in the discussion, but I'm gonna keep that on my clipboard just in case. Uh, so it's important to explain these results in the context of your research questions and hypothesis. So now we'd say something like our research question queried, to what extent does age predict waste relief in pools? We hypothesized that as people got older, they are less likely to pee in pools. Now we ran a test and we found that there are significant differences, but in my discussion, I'll just say we found support for our hypothesis that age moderated, moderated relief in pools. Now, when I'm relating my results, it is helpful, also necessary for your assignment, that you tell me how the results compare to related studies. And so for me, I'd look back in my introduction in my lit review and I would say, this, uh, this, these results are consistent with, I don't know, what's this dude's name? With uh, Toile 2010, who found that some people pee in pools, and with, um, 
Let's see. Ah, Gomi, 1976, who found that everybody pees. So after that, uh, I would go through and I would go to my next result. And we found that literally everyone, 100% of our sample, likes the song, I Believe I Can Fly. Even people who reported they don't like music like the song, I Believe I Can Fly. We hypothesized that people who like that song would be more likely to pee on people. I mean, in people's pools. I mean, in pools. Ooh, hold on. Ooh, sorry. Uh, little slip there. Uh, we did not find, obviously, support for this hypothesis because literally everybody liked that song. Now, our next question was, do you find a particular R&B singer uh, who is currently serving jail time in Chicago to be reprehensible? And we thought that people who do find that particular R&B singer to be reprehensible are less likely to pee in pools. And our results found support for that hypothesis. Now, Notice I didn't say that our results proved that that hypothesis was correct. We don't do that in academic writing. We're like uh, a person who has an interview in the morning who like sets their alarm, but then wakes up every two hours all through the night because they appropriately predict something might not work right. So, anywho, uh, okay. Other parts of our research, uh, okay, so our research uh, looked at the research question, uh, does self-perception of patients predict likelihood of human drainage in a recreational aquatic arenas? Now, I'm gonna stop myself to make a point. Don't try to college your way to a good grade at the expense of clear and concise writing. I know that you've studied big words, probably for the SAT. You might be studying them right now for the GRE. I also do not care. If I've got to read a whole sentence again to figure out something as simple as you're trying to say peeing in a pool, then you probably should have just said peeing in a pool. All right, I digress. Uh, we did find support for this hypothesis. Uh, we hypothesized also that people uh, who think peeing in a pool is gross would be less likely to pee in a pool. And surprisingly, we did not find support for this hypothesis. More on that later. Uh, okay, so I've put my results in plain English. I've related them to past studies. Now it's time to go deeper and talk about these studies, talk about these results and what. So if I'm going to go into my results, I might say something like, so like in trying to explain the first result, I might think uh, it could be that the older you are, the more you have practice pottying and the more likely you are to do so in an appropriate receptacle. Or maybe the increase in age is also an increase in maturity or in empathy and with, you know, and those have something to do with each other. And so as you grow in empathy, you might think, well, you know, when I see pee, I move, shout out to Riley, and you wouldn't want to subject anyone to that in a pool, so you're less likely to pee in the pool. Uh, also, if you find a particular R&B singer's behavior reprehensible, likely that appeals to, uh, you know, a person's sense of justice and decency. And someone with these characteristics might think it more decent to leave a pool to relieve themselves. Similarly, a person with patience might feel more inclined to leave to a restroom, while a person with less patience might think, uh, I just want to have fun right now. And so they are, I don't know, they don't care about relieving themselves on their friends in the pool because they just want to get back to having fun. Um, so while maybe those characteristics of justice and decency, uh, they do, you know, spark conviction to get out of the pool, it appears that, you know, personal resistance to being gross doesn't really do that at all. In fact, you know, the fact that you're willing to admit that peeing in a pool is gross and still pee in a pool means that you could literally be in a pool having a conversation about how peeing in a pool is gross while peeing on the friend or your friend could be peeing on you while you have that. That's a weird thought. Okay, so anywho, that's the point is maybe that maybe like personal appeal to being gross isn't all that much of a strong deterrent. And maybe it's because, you know, when you can pee in a pool clandestinely. And so nobody will know. And so maybe it's like, 
you know, the idea is gross and like maybe if somebody knew you were being gross, you would be more deterred, but since they don't, then you're not that deterred. Anyway, these are just examples of ways that you can talk about your results, the ways that you can like kind of get deep with it. Okay, uh, so next, once you do that, you have three things left to do. Once you've impressed me with your deep thoughts, your deep ways of uh, critically thinking about your results, you have three things left to do. Implications, limitations, future results. I'll give you an example of each. Implications. So if you're trying to encourage people to not pee in a pool, you might find a sign that says, don't pee in a pool, it's gross, to be less effective than a sign that says, you're too old to be peeing in a pool, which might you know, remind people of their age and encourage them not to pee in the pool based on you know, data we found. Or a sign that says, hey, when you pee in a pool, you are killing your friends. And that may appeal to your deep sense of justice and decency. Also, I should have said, you um, R&B singer that is currently in jail in Chicago, your friends, but whatever. Anywho, point is, uh, yeah. Also that thing I said I put on my clipboard earlier, yeah, that would go here. Okay, limitations. Uh, you might say something like, our results may have been hindered, hindered by self-report bias. People may not be honest about whether they pee in pools or if they like a certain you know, R&B singer or if they think that R&B singer is reprehensible. Also, uh, the use of I Believe I Can Fly was clearly not useful. Space Jam, um, church miming groups and Yolanda Adams have clearly made that song too powerful to be a predictor. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, also a note about Space Jam that has nothing to do with anyone. I'm sorry, nothing to do with anything. Uh, I wasn't going to see Space Jam and then I found out that it has one of the greatest of all time in it, Don Cheadle. All right, we're back. F uh, future research. So you might say something like future result research may focus on if our finding that age you know, moderates that behavior is really like what we're finding or if we could find a more explanatory variable like, you know, maturity or empathy. Okay, a couple things and then we are done. So what do you do if your results are not significant? Notice I didn't say insignificant because we don't use that. But uh, what if you do if your results are not significant? Well, you failed and you should have picked a better topic. Or you could do like most researchers and just rework the numbers till you get something significant. I'm kidding, researchers would never do that. Also, researchers do that all the time. So, uh, yeah, in fact, it's kind of like peeing in a pool where like researchers would report that that's really unethical and then they would do it anyway. Okay, uh, let's see, where was I? Oh, okay, so if your results are not significant, uh, you can still generally follow this outline. Uh, I even discussed some of my not significant uh, results in the outline just a minute ago. Okay, so quick thing about discussion and then we'll get out of here. Uh, avoid overstating, uh, only discuss what you actually found and then stick to the context of your study, your research questions. For example, I could not you know, talk about other general pool behaviors or other pe other behaviors in other parts of life that were not like talked about in my study. I can't just like pull this in and pull that in. Now it's gotta be pretty like streamlined to what I study. And then, um, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, I, yeah, stay generally where you're supposed to be. I don't know a lot about everything. I know a little bit about people peeing in pools. So, uh, great. Good luck on your assignment and don't pee in pools.